Now where the hell are we? Hang on. And why have we got this flaming car? Well, all froggies drive these, don't they? Jer sure doesn't want to be here, ce soir. Look, we've got to get into Europe before 1992. We've got to thieve off them, before they thieve off us. Oh, that's great, Barney, and now we're lost. Clay Le Francais, poor right cuckoo. Now he's red on. Chateau de saint Paul, two kilometers, that's it? Barney. OK, Barney. Come on, come on! Oh, yeah, Barney! Barney, for God's sake, come on! Ladies and gentlemen, would you hold your numbers up clearly? There's no need to make this more difficult than it already is. On the front row, yes, 150, 170. Against you, sir, 190. What a pillow. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Any more? Any advance on 190? Yes, madam. 210. That's 210. Number 37. Miss Court, I believe. I think his mummy got him ready. Do be quiet. <laughs> and so that leads us on to lot... 118. And look, here's the lamps. Late Victorian brass barge lamps. So where shall we begin? 200 pounds? Yes, I have 200. Do I have 220? 220 and 240. 240? Oh, hello. Uh, with the charming lady at the back. 240 anymore? For number 63. Hello, Miss Williams. Hey, just a moment. I was still bidding. I'm sorry, sir. Too late. What's all this Miss Williams bit? What's me? My maiden name's Sally Williams. Oh. And he was Roger Radcliffe. Scots, Specs and Bats in the Rock. But not you here, mate. Don't be daft. No, no. No, I was soft on the class villain, me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, our Roger was a major wimpo. He's doing all right now, though, isn't he? Hmm. Sally! Roger! I couldn't believe it. Sally Williams in person. Lovely pair of lamps, too. That was really wicked. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. Well, thanks very much, anyway. Look, I have to dash now, but we must meet up soon and have a good chat. Well, don't bother with this cue. Just send your chappy here around in the morning and I'll sort it all out for you. So, ciao for now. Mm. <laughs> Chap 
Chappie. Bear's breath. Oh, he's all right. Send your Chappie round. Oh, what's wrong with that? Well, not your Chappie. He didn't mean my bloke, did he? He meant my employee. Oh, did he? Well, he's not wrong, is he? I mean, on paper, technically, you are my employee. Oh, am I? Oh. Do you hear that? I'm her employee. Yeah. A gopher, a chappy. Well, I'll tell you what. I resign. Jean-Luc. Bonjour, Jean-Luc. Oui, Audra. Ce soir, at your small airport, it will be in a large box addressed to a Madame Finch. A Joseph Nib grandfather clock. Mm -hmm. For a Mrs. Finch in Durham this evening. Well done, Jean-Luc. A bientôt. Right, lads. How do we feel about a little bonded warehouse, then? <laughs> yes, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Three English blokes do a safe in Brittany, and one of them has a heart attack and snuffs it, and the others <laughs> grab the loot and scarper without him. <laughs> I wouldn't blame them. How could they tell an Englishman was dead, anyhow? Oh, someone dead around here. He's feeling emasculated. Ah, Sally's been at him with the scissors again, has she? Something like that. Will you two just shut up? Hello, Thomas. Hmm. Hello, Miss Williams. Could I have a little word, please? No, nah, sorry, boss. Look, lunch break. Do you see this? Yeah. This is used for uh, unbolting things. And if you don't come with me right now, I'm going to use this to unbolt your very favourite little toy. <laughs> I'd better have another pint, then. Pourquoi a Leeds? You sons of Durham, dickhead! You need a vu transmitter a box of bleeding Durham! Vu's a pillock! Kill Jack. He's good, isn't he? What box, Jack? What box do you think, you dozy mull? You stupid husband! And the other box, Jack? Part of Van La Slaggery. Hey, what's going on? Just shut it, Jude! We'll go down in the morning. Harry, go and nick a hearse. Oh, come on, you stupid thing on the boat! Oh. What are you doing? I'm bloody knitting. What's it look like? Well, it looks like you're stripping the thread. And when you've done that, the whole thing will have to be reboard at huge expense. This barge has got to go out tomorrow. That engine will be overhauled in the union's duly allotted time. Any management interference could cause widespread union unrest throughout your entire business empire. All right. I'm sorry. Sorry? What are you sorry for? For referring to you as my employee. Did you say that? <laughs> I didn't even notice. Come on, you better let me do that. This barge's got to go out tomorrow and we are partners after all. So we're partners now, are we? I just happen to own everything, pay all the bills and pay the wages, but now we're partners. Oh, shove off. All right. <laughs> ah, here it is. I know, but there are two. Which one is it? I don't know. 
Right, better safe than sorry. We'll have them both. There's only supposed to be one. All right, all right. Rodney, it's better be here. For that. Here, go off. Bloody hell. Get rid of it. Well, where to? I don't care. Just get rid of it. Take the name off it. No, go on. I don't want to know. Get it out of my house. All right, keep your wig on. Oh, God. So, that's it then. What do you mean it's been bloody nicked? You can't nick it. He's dead. I mean, he's been stolen. The body of the late Barney Finch, safe cracker, has been nicked. Oh! Shut it, Jude! Please, somebody sell him my Barney! Shut it! What's the gem, then? Two men broke in here and stole two boxes addressed to Finch. Two? What two? Barney wasn't in bits, was he? They got the clock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, we don't know nothing about no second box. We come here with his grieving widow. <laughs> Shut it, Jude! With his grieving widow and find that his body's been stolen. Well, it's not good enough, is it? So we are gonna raise a bloody stink. Just you wait. I look forward to that. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> the flaming clock. What clock? Shove off, Jude! The bloody hell's done this. Don't matter. He's dead. Cold bloody me. Let's get out of here. Hey. I mean, I'm not sexist. No. If a woman's in a position of power, fine. As long as she's worked for it. Thomas, I'm trying to fiddle the vat man. It's a bad time to be bashing my ear with your trivial problems. I ain't got any problems. <laughs> no, sir. I ain't got any problems. Morning, all. What's that? What's in the box? Neither am I in the mood for riddles. The box in the middle of the yard. Somebody must have dumped it here last night. Bloody road. Bloody heavy. Uh, feet, there you go. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Ain't there bits of bog? Thank you, Pippa. It's a coffin! Oh, I was hoping for a croquet set. Must be deaf. Well, I've got to run a few errands for the boss lady. I'll see you later. Well, you can't leave me here with somebody else's body. We'll call the cops. Oh, wonderful idea. Good afternoon, Constable. I just happened to come by this fully occupied coffin. Tell you what, open it up. You might make a friend. <laughs> there you go. 50 notes. Get smashing. Um, also, I've got to collect two brass lamps. It's lot 118, I think. Yes, yeah, she's with Mr. Radcliffe in his office. It's third on the right. <laughs> I like to drink during business hours. It's mildly decadent, but not really sinful. Sally? Oh, oh Thomas. What? Oh, look what you've made me do. Sorry. So you got these lamps in? Yes. Um, Roger, I didn't have a chance to introduce you yesterday. This is Thomas. Hello, Thomas. I'll be right with you. Drinkies, eh? Yes. There's a coffee machine outside. Do what? Coffee machine? Outside, takes 10 peas. Here you are. Now we won't be long. Uh, uh, Roger. No, 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 it's all, it's all right, miss. No, I'll be better off outside, you know, with my own kind and all that. Thank you very much, Gov. You're a tough, most kind. Thank you, Sahib. Would you want it? You can't eat off that. Of course I can. That's what this place badly needs. A nice coffee table. What do you think you're doing? Look, let me eat in peace, will you? What are you going to do with it? Well, I'm dumping somewhere tonight. 
Like where? I don't know. I think it's somewhere. So, uh, when the shift started to Europe, he set up his own antique import-export business in northern France. Pretty smart, eh? Oh, yeah, amazing. I mean, brilliantly smart. I mean, what a wonderful wadger he is. You're not by any chance being sarcastic, are you? Sarcastic? Me? No, no, no. I'm just waiting for God to step aside so Wadger can run a universe, that's all. You don't like him. Oh, Sally, look, the man is an animated oil slick. He's the sort of stuff that drips off smelly trees in hot jungles. While you're Mr Wonderful, I suppose, God's gift to the universe. No, but at least I'm not some lardy da ding dong with his nose stuck up his own kyber. Can I have that in writing? Sally, the man's a dishcloth. Ah, uh -huh. that's it, isn't it? I see. Meet somebody who's educated and you feel under some sort of a threat. Threat? Me? Listen, you are talking to a bloke who once went eight rounds with Henry Cooper's third cousin. My, my, what an achievement! Yeah, well, Roger couldn't punch his way out of a wet paper bag. Roger probably doesn't spend much of his time in a wet paper bag. Roger is a wet paper bag. <laughs> and finally, the case of the missing mobster. Jeremy Foote reports from Durham. Tonight is to be the wake for ex-con Barney Finch. All the family are here, except for one notable exception. The late Barney Finch himself. Barney died while involved in a safe-cracking job in northern France. His body was flown home yesterday and then stolen from the airport and hasn't been seen since. Holy mackerel. Earlier, I spoke to the family of Barney Finch. Judy, how do you feel about Barney's disappearance? Well, it's a disgrace. Barney's broken. I'd just like to say to any of the so-called criminal fraternity that whoever Pepper, stole Pepper. Pepper. Barney from his court, Barney Finch, they better watch he, out. He, his name is Go. Barney! Barney? <laughs> his, Barney his name is Barney! And oh, well, I'm glad you got a name for him, Lively, but he still goes. You can call him anything you like. You cannot keep a corpse for a pet. Please bring back my Barney to me. And what's more, Roger... Oh, do stop calling him Roger! Oh, I am sorry. Mr Radcliffe. Yeah. Radcliffe! Well, Roger Wadders, he's typical of the English middle class, isn't he? He's a Cockney accent and immediately thinks, Hello, low life, I better hide the silver. Look, he didn't know that you and I are... Well, you know. Lovers. Mm. But he knows now, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Uh, do you want a cup of coffee? Oh, you cow. Are you telling me that you... You let that punch treat me like a dog and you didn't put him in a picture? Oh, do stop being so pathetic. You just don't like him because he's made something of his life. Oh, no, I haven't, I suppose. Is that it? Well, I'll tell you something. Why don't you find another mechanic to get these stupid boats afloat, eh? What a good idea. And I just might find who doesn't eat me out of house and home, who doesn't spread all his filthy gubbins all over my kitchen, and who doesn't expect bedroom privileges as well! <coughs> what? What? No, Lively, not now, mate. Oh, my God. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, well, well, yeah, but who would I be? Mr Burke or Mr Hare? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, I'll see you. It'll cost you a pony, though, all right? Right, I'll see you there. I am going out! Where? To someone who needs me. Someone who treats me like an equal. Come on! So what's with the suit, then? I always wear the suit when handling the dead. Uh, bit of respect, quite right. Listen, why don't we just chuck it in the canal? Look, a man has a right to attend his own wake. All right, we'll leave it in left luggage, then. <sighs> Look, the Finch brothers run Durham. If we start messing around with them, we'll all finish up in boxes. Mm. Match boxes, maybe. I've got the Finch address. Well, well done. I don't want to come with you. Well, you can't. Body snatching's all men's work. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. 
And make sure that back door is secure, will you? Yes, Willie. A genuine Joseph Nib. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, yes, and it's a snip at eight grand. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll bring it into your shopette in the morning. Oh, yes. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, bye, Willie. that my credit card was stolen. How could it be stolen? I said to him when I have it right here. Honestly, they only half educate oh, these just people. Just get on with it, will you? Excuse oh. me, sir. Oh, Jesus. Is this your vehicle, sir? Oh, yeah, absolutely right. That's it. Yeah, my vehicle. No one else is here. I have the papers. Uh, license, insurance, birth certificates, vaccination, the whole lot is all there, you sir. Are you aware that your offside rail light isn't working? And that your rear number plate isn't properly secured. Oh, God, isn't that desperate? Huh? Oh, Just uh, give me the ticket, sir, and I'll, I'll bring it straight to the garage. Anywhere you say, sir. Oh, <laughs> no, I haven't been drinking, sir, no, no. Sir. I never touch it. Muslim, you know. Open the back, will you, sir? Uh, what for? <sighs> Hiya. Peppa. Could you step out, please, miss? I'm 19 and I can prove it. And if Mum's got you lot onto me, well, she can't. Thomas and me are going to get married, and I don't care if she gets every cop in the country trying to track me down. Here's my driving licence, see? Anyhow, it's none of your business or anyone else's what we get up to. It's not a police state. So if Mum ropes you blokes in, I'll have you for harassment. Might be safer if you travelled up front, miss. Come on. So I thought he might be down the pub. He's not. No, no, I'm not angry. Just wanted to know where to send the Rottweiler, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, fine. Thanks. Bye. Hello? Sally? You home? It's Roger. Oh. Well. So, uh, what brings you out to the sticks so late? Well, I, I just pulled off a bit of a clever business deal, actually. I was feeling sort of, you know, hyped up. And I thought, oh, that I wanted to see you again. See me? Why? Oh, you know, why would chaps normally want to see, you know, Thingies. Do you mean girls? Yes. Well, that's very sweet of you, Roger. I, I mean, is there someone in your life? That's a very leading question. <laughs> that's a rather evasive answer. It was meant to be. Um, 
How about lunch? It's midnight, Roger. <laughs> Tomorrow. In the county arcade. I'm, I'm delivering a clock. <laughs> But look, they're only having a bleeding knees up, aren't they? A wig is a wig, body or no body. So what are we supposed to do then? Knock on the door, say, hold the phone, here's the missing party. Round the back. Good thinking. Not a word. You keep listening. When villains drink, they talk. Hey, see. Oh, well, if it isn't my favourite policeman. Hello, Judy. Husband turned up. Well, do have a bit of respect, Jim. What are you doing here? Just come to see my lovely self, eh? I'm looking for whoever was helping Barney. My statement said that Harry and Jack were here. I'm sorry. You don't like them, Judy. Why don't you just drop them in it? <laughs> Where would I go? What would I live on? There's a nice reward for those stones. Put them away and you could be quite comfy. You're not welcome here. So why don't you put your penny on and go practice your funny handshake somewhere else? Just drop by to pay my respects. If ever I can be of any assistance. What's he want? You, Jack. You and your stupid brother. Don't trust you, Jude. You never have. And Barney's not here to protect you anymore. So watch yourself, huh? That's gonna be it there. Hang on. I'll just go and have a butcher's. Hey, you. Where are you going? Just gonna have a jimmy, that's all. Oh, a jimmy, eh? Yeah. That's me, pal. Oh, no, not, not this. No, oh, Nate, not this. This one's an English Jimmy. An English oh, Jimmy? That's an art, eh? All right, great, great. Let's have a week, Dan. Oh. Well, what have we got to do now? Join in. Who's going to know us? Right. So when I say that Brendan Bean was the Ralph Harris of Irish literature, I mean that he evolved into a professional Irishman in the same way that Ralph Harris became a professional Welshman. Australian. Thank you, sir. That's OK, any time. <laughs> seen you round here and I thought I knew all the hard men if you know what I mean no uh, the thing is I'm, I'm I'm from down south you see oh let me see which mob um well basically it's the acne mob oh what do you do around here mm -hmm. well uh, me and my friend lively we're um we're up here to sort out the Leeds mob <laughs> what do they call you um, well, the... Tommy. Oh. Tommy Gunn! Oh, you've heard of me, then. <laughs> oh, you are a lovely man, Tommy. Hold on, hold on, oh, hold up, hold on. What would your husband say? <laughs> Not much. This is his way. Give us a kiss. Come oh, on, Trudy. Oh, Trudy. Oh, look, yeah. this isn't right. No, oh, come on. Look, there's a good girl. Calm down. Tart. No, hold on, hold on. Look, just a minute. She's only having a giggle. You look... 
She's not supposed to be having a giggle. Well, no. She's a widow. Oh. Ready? Chuck him out and give him one. On your bike. I'll chuck him out. You dirty, filthy, desecrating swine, climbing all over the widow like that. I'll break every bone in your body. Out you get. And I don't like the look of you either. Out you get. Who the bloody hell are they? What are you doing? Where were you last night? I was with Lively. No, you weren't. I rang there. Yeah, well, we were out. Where? We were, uh, doing a delivery in Durham, as it happens. Oh, so that explains the traditional lipstick on your collar told the tale on you, doesn't it? Oh, no, well, what happened was we popped into this sort of party and, and some drunken bird gave me a little hug in passing, that's all. That's all? Yeah. Oh, well, that's all right then, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, makes my life a lot easier. What does that mean? Well, I mean, we're not married, we're free agents, and we did always agree to give each other plenty of room to move, didn't we? Yeah. Well, I need more room to move round here, so I'd like you to get your things out by midday. <laughs> <laughs> Through Jack. Who else knew about the clock idea? What is all this clock stuff? Well, we couldn't bring the French storms in with us, right? So we bought a clock and put them in that. Then we got a bloke to fly it over while we come back on the ferry. The froggy. Eh? He knew where it was going. Ah, he bloody did. Get onto Lou Hambro. Have a borrow of his little plane. We can be there and back before lunch. I wasn't sure whether you'd come. Well, why shouldn't I? I am a free agent, you know. Yes, I bet. And jolly good, too. I, I'm all in favor of this new feminist sort of thingy. I remember when we were at school, you would brook no nonsense, as they say in the classics. <laughs> oh, do you remember that Wilson chappie? He was a sort of self-styled school bully. And you got him into the Mikado, made him dress up in that frock and orange wig. And he looked like a right... Uh, would you excuse me for just one moment? Sally! Fancy seeing you here! What do you think you're doing? I was reading a paper. You're spying on me. Oh, don't be daft. Yes, you are. What have I got to spy on, eh? Roger the Wilf? What are you doing with him, Sally? How dare you? Oi, oi, don't you handle me. Get out. Get out. Get out. Immediately. Oh, I won't be leaving the table. Sorry, ladies. Move. Go on. I listen. told you. Oh, watch your rudge. I won't be one moment. You've got room here for a little, then, haven't you? Get out. Go on. Head for that exit. Go on. Get out. Move. 
Whipping, Thomas. That's all they understand. An electric cattle prize. I mean, have you seen this geezer? She's an absolute 22 carat lump of lard. What does she thinks she's doing? Aliens, Thomas. Visitors from another planet. We've got to agree with you there, mate. And one day, we're going to pack their bags again and take off. Leaving us no wiser as to why they came here in the first place. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be messed about. Absolutely not. No. Sinker and concrete. Hello. Oh, yeah. Well, if it isn't, tell me go. Hello, Judy. Fancy a drink? Why not? Out of the frying pan. Oh, dear, oh, Lord, you mean... I mean, he just dropped dead right there. In the froggy chateau. Safe blue, so did his heart. Bloody hell. Jack and Harry just did a bunk. And we left him there without so much as a kiss of life, and now the silly sods have gone and lost the loot. How'd they do that, then? <sighs> <laughs> You're a flying bugger, Tommy. How did they do that, indeed? I know. We all know, don't we? Do we? Tick tock, tick tock. Oh. I don't know what you mean. Most of all, got you to fly, not the clock at Angleterra, not the clock in Nicht. The clock is in shard, you'll get your money back. No! I'm gonna give them part of just an African clock. A key of evil god. He's good, isn't he? <laughs> no! Okay, I tell you! I have an arrangement with a few friends. Uh, when I, I sell clocks, they steal them back. I, I sell them again. It, it's good business. No longer that a friend? Hey! Roger Radcliffe! An address? <laughs> no! I don't know where he is. Why not? Because I'm not my Thomas's keeper. He's a free spirit, entitled to range over hill and dale. Oh, put a sock in it. Sorry, sir. Pippa, do you know where Thomas is? Yeah, he's just gone down the pub. With, with a tear in his eye and a pain in his heart. Why didn't you tell me? Because he asked me not to say how upset he was. You've been so hard on that poor little flower. Oh, do us a favour. Why did you tell her where he was? Well, what's the point of a relationship if it's not based on trust? Oh, <laughs> rubbish, child. There's only one way to maintain a successful marriage, and that is to lie through your teeth about absolutely everything all the time. I learned that from my father, and he had four highly successful marriages, so there. Come on, Tommy. I know about the stones in the clock. Oh, yeah? We could leave the country together. Father France, Rio. Just with you and me. I'm quite something in a warm climate. Well, yeah, I can believe that. Now, I'm going to go to the ladies' room. And you can think about it. Get me another drink. Give us a pint of bitter and a gin and bromide, please. Thomas? Oh. Sally! Yes? Uh, what were you doing here? I came to see you. Oh, that, well, that's nice, isn't it? You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just surprised to see you, that's all. Look. I think we should work out where we are with each other. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'll tell you what. 
we'll have a good think about it this afternoon. Then tonight, I'll come round and we'll have a good chat about it. Mm -mm. I want to talk about it now. Look, Sally, I'm sorry, but it's too soon. I'll be round this evening and we'll, we'll work everything out, all right? I, I come on, really off you go. Really... God almighty, look at that creature. Well, not if... Where's my drink then, Tommy Gunn? Mm. Thomas? Who's this bleeding mole then? Uh, this is Sally, Judy, Judy, Sally. Sally! Oh, they get so aggressive, these Salvation Army tarts, don't they? Now, come on. What about our deal? Look, look. I don't know what you're talking about, and to be quite honest, I don't give a monkey's either. You wait! You bloody wait! The Finch brothers will have you, you'll see! Hello, Roger. It's Sally. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, uh, listen, um, is dinner still on for this evening? You bet I'll be there. With bloody bells on. Inspector Thompson? Jim, it's Judy Finch. I've been having a little think about what you said. Sally? Sal? Oh! I could explain. I'm sure you could. You always can. Yeah, well, just give us a bit of time. I haven't got any more time. Not for you. Not for me? Who for, then? Surely not that little slimy health hazard. Come on, are you kidding? Why? What's so special about you? What have you done that's so bloody marvellous, eh? You're in no position to sneer at anyone. No, you're right. No, I haven't done much of anything. The only good thing I've ever done... Is what? What have you done that's any good at all to anyone? I fell in love with you. You love me? Of course I do. How can we stop this argy-bargy? Because you love me. Yes, Sally. You rat! Rat, what's that for? You use every trick in the book, don't you? And then when it all fails, you bring out the old doe-eyed looks in the I love you bit. But I do! How can you say that? What about that, that thing in the pub? I can explain that, but you don't want any explanations, do you? No, you just want a good excuse so you can get off to somewhere nice and safe, somewhere with no risks. Well, all right. There you go. You've got your get out now, haven't you? You fool. You bloody fool. Wellington Road, Chateau Roger Rabbit. Dead rabbit, yeah. La Panso toast, maybe. <laughs> you can communicate with women on the same wavelength as you talk to normal human beings. Is that a fact? I avoid them like the plague. And they avoid you because you smell like the plague. Intentionally. <sighs> Eight day socks, grey underwear, anchovy flavoured toothpaste, that guarantees me. An alien free life. You're an arse sick, you. Who? Oh. Both of you. Do you really want her back? Well, of course he does. Well, go and get her then. She doesn't want this Roger fella. All she wants is a sign from you, a statement. Be positive. Have some balls. I first got into clocks when I was at university. Cambridge. I watched all these Yanks wandering around, and I just knew they'd love a little bit of old England if they could get their hands on it. And then, when I was in France, I used to go on the knock round Normandie et Bretagne, and Normandie and Brittany. And you'd be just amazed how many really good English clocks I found that had crossed the channel. How oh, very clever. Hmm, I thought so. The 
would be really lovely at this time of year before the tourists arrive. And I've got loads of chums. So, what do you say? Sally? Sorry, Roger. What was that? Venice. Venice? Goodness, Sally, I just said, would you like to come to Venice with me? No, she wouldn't. Ah. Thomas. Yeah, that's right. Thomas. And I've come to take her home. <laughs> Sally, you needn't have ordered your driver. I'm not a bleeding driver. Is your chappy a bit doolally by any chance? <laughs> Listen, you punts. I'm not her chappy. I'm her man. I share her life. I share her bed. Do you understand that? Sally, is this true? Good grief. With the help? That's it. I'm going to have to thump him now. No, Thomas. Put him down. You coming home with me, then? Well, I suppose if that's what it takes to stop you from harming him. Not down. Down. Thank you, Sally. Well? Well, what? Well, I'm not walking out of here of my own accord. Oh, no. I insist upon being dragged, kicking and screaming, back to your cave, where you will no doubt have your evil way with me and enslave me forever. All right. God, you're oh, God, God, you God, you I'll put you down and the rest. I'll tell you something that one calls for England. Jesus Christ. Where are you going? Well, uh, anywhere you like, sir. Let's go back inside, shall we? I don't know where he is, sir. Oh, for God's sake. Your boy's in big trouble. Well, he never did a thing. All right. You won't mind helping us with our inquiries? Oh, I'm a man of honour and integrity, sir. Loyalty to my friends has always been my guide in life. OK, I'll arrest you oh, instead. He's at 27 Wellington Ward. Thank you. Right, let's go. Oh! Where's our clock, Mr. Ravish? <laughs> Look, he's not Roger. Roger! This is Roger's house, and he's the clock man. He must be outside or something. There's nobody outside. Dinner for two, eh? One. Two. Or are you the butler? Oh, don't you start. Oh, don't do it! Come here! Get off! Oh, Stop it! Look, we don't know what you're on about, honestly. Look, watch my lips, I'll explain again. Now, your brother's body was dumped at my mate's place. So we did you a favour and we brought him home before he went off. I mean, we don't know anything about any jewels or clocks or anything like that, honest. Roger is a two-faced, slimy weasel. Are you sure of that? Quite sure. And he's the man you want. You must be able to see that. Give us our jewels. By the time I count to three. Or your Swiss cheese. One. Roger! Where the bloody hell are you? Two. No! <laughs> Hang on. We haven't done anything wrong, so why are we running? Because they're the police and I'm me. That's why out the back. Wait! Roger could clear us. Roger ain't here, is he? I think he hey, is. Where are you oh, no, hold on, hold on. You're the man who robs the robbers. No, listen, you got it all wrong. I, I, no, I can't explain it again. You tell him, will you? He is innocent. Yeah, of course he is. I am. I am Sis Roger Watson. He's got all the tools and he's done a runner. That's honest. Tell it to the judge. No, just a moment. If you had Roger and the stones, that would put Thomas in the clear, wouldn't it? But I haven't got Roger, whoever the hell Roger is, and I haven't got the stones. I have Judy Finch, who tells me that she and Tommy here were planning to cash in and go to Rio. Is this true? Of course it's not true. Swear it. I swear it. I'm taking you in. Now, now hang on. Roger, the stones and a confession, and you let him go, right? Do I get them as well? I promise. Everyone. 
So, amaze me. Ta-da! Hello, Watch. Thank you so much, Mr. Redcliffe. Give us a kiss, you. I certainly will. Could someone take these off, please? Don't bother, Inspector. Come along, Chappie. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Wednesday, bondage night. <laughs>